a very good afternoon dear children uh, so today we are going to do our third story of our english reader book that is first flight so children uh, the story the title of the story itself uh, we are going to do today is first flight his first flight has been written by liam o flaherty right so as it is the title of this book so you may uh, clearly have an idea that this must be the most important story of this book uh, of course not from the examination point of view but from the literary point of view right so his first flight is one of the most important stories you will ever read so children as the title suggest his first flight means this story is about flying and the act of flying is done in sky always right so see uh, we will just read part 1 of before you read what does he say uh, since the earliest times humans have dreamed of conquering the skies so here are two stories about flying so we would cover these two stories in two days so the first title is his first flight and the question recurring the story is a young seagull is afraid to fly right how does he conquer his fear so the answer of first question itself lies in the second part of the question first says a young seagull is afraid to fly it means the story is about a seagull right so seagull uh, is a bird that lives near the sea and uh, has short legs long wings and uh, uh, it may be of white and uh, it may have white and grey feathers right so uh, in hindi it's generally known as samundri right samundri so seagull the bird that is afraid of flying the story his first flight Uh, the title means that the seagull's first flight in the sky when that seagull who was afraid of flying in the sky when he took his first flight when he first when he used his wings for the first time and flew high in the sky so this story describes about his first flight right so the writer uh, liam o flaherty will discuss how that young seagull conquered his fear so i would draw an analogy at the end of this i hope you would easily be able to relate yourself with uh, that young seagull right so let's begin with the text the young seagull was alone on his ledge so uh, children ledge as uh, the meaning is given besides the line itself uh, that's a narrow horizontal uh, space narrow horizontal self uh, projecting uh, from a wall or a high cliff right here it's a cliff so the young seagull uh, seagull was alone on his hedge and uh, his two brothers and his sister had already flown away the day before it means that was a family the writer is talking of a family the seagull uh, who is being talked about in the title of the story it is about his brothers and sister who have already flown away one day prior to that right so in the next line the writer says he had been afraid to fly with them it means he was afraid he had fear in his mind and uh, what was his fear let's read so somehow when he had taken a little run forward to the brink of the ledge and attempted to flap his wings he became afraid the great expanse of sea stretched down beneath and it was such a long way down miles down right so he felt certain that his wings would never support him so he bent his head and ran away back uh, to the little hole under the ledge where he slept at night so even when each of his brothers and his little sister whose wings were far shorter than his own they ran to the brink right so flapped their wings and flew away but that particular seagull 
he failed to muster up courage it means he failed to take up that courage that plunge which appeared to him so desperate it means otherwise he was also desperate to fly but he was so afraid he was observing the writer says that he was observing his brothers and sisters even his younger sister whose wings were comparatively shorter right because a seagull sister was younger than him her wings were all her wings were also shorter in comparison so she too flew away a day before it means the young seagull was not uh, the thing was not that the young seagull didn't have that capability to fly in the sky in fact he couldn't take up that courage he couldn't prepare his mind for flying in the sky he always used to feel that either his wings would not support him it means he will uh, he will not be accompanied by his wings so he tried but his mind was so much full of fear that uh, like he couldn't initiate the process in fact internally he always wanted to fly he was observing his family flying high in the sky but he uh, couldn't take up the courage to expand his wings and face that uh, like kind of monstrous sea that was appearing in front of him he was his mind was not ready to tackle that his mind was not ready to face that right next last line of first page he says his father and mother had come around calling to him shrilly upbraiding him threatening to let him starve on his ledge unless he flew away but for the life of him he couldn't move you know uh, what uh, tactics were adopted by his parents his parents his mother and father asked him to fly they used harsh tone they used it shrill tone means a harsh sharp tone upbraiding him means upbraid means to rebuke someone to scold someone right so threatening him it means they threatened him saying that either he should fly or he will not be uh, provided with any kind of food right so they refused him any food because he was not making efforts to fly his parents really wanted that he should also fly like his other brothers and sisters other brothers and sisters right but he was not ready for that here he makes a choice to sit there in his place only as see in the last line it's written but for the life of him he couldn't move it means on the one thought he was uh, like uh, if he should be given food right on the one thought but his parents denied him any food until or unless he flies by himself but for the life of for the sake of uh, his life for the sake of protecting his life he didn't move from his place because he thought that uh, he could uh, survive without uh, taking food at that time right but if he starts flying in the sky his wings will not support him and he would automatically die that's why he stayed there without making any effort to fly in the sky right i hope that's clear till this uh, paragraph next a uh, second stanza so that was 24 hours ago since then nobody had come near him the day before all day long he had watched his parents flying about with his brothers and sister perfecting them in the art of flight teaching them how to skim the waves and how to dive for fish dive for fish means how to catch a fish for eating skimming skimming means moving just above the surface of the sea right moving uh, or waving just above the surface of the sea so uh, what's explained here it means just one day prior right so he had been watching his parents like who were flying uh, with his brothers and sisters and uh, the parents were uh, providing tips to the brothers and sisters how to fly comfortably in the sky right so how they can become perfect as you know like uh, some of the tips uh, some of the suggestions are given by the parents to all the children that how we should live life or how we should protect us from others in the same manner the seagulls parents 
were giving lots of advices to seagull's brothers and sisters that how they can perfect themselves in the art of flying right so they were teaching them how to catch a fish for themselves in fact in one line i would say that the seagull's parents were actually teaching uh, their kids how to survive in this world how to get how to get their own food ready how to survive in this world how to live this life right so next line he says he had in fact seen his older brother catch his first herring and devour it herring a fish a soft fish right so in fact uh, the writer says that the seagull had seen that his older brother has become perfect in catching his own fish as he has attacked the fish and caught it to in order to prepare for his food right so he was standing on a rock while his parents circled round raising a proud cackle right so here uh, children the cackle means uh, you know uh, the cry of a seagull Espe uh, that cry especially that cry when they are laying an egg especially that cry of a seagull when they are laying an egg right so see he is standing on the rock while his parents circled around raising a proud cackle and all the morning uh, the whole family had walked about on the big plateau mid down uh, sorry midway down the opposite cliff taunting him with his cowardice you know children uh, taunting means uh, to uh, talk in a, a sarcastic manner to talk in an ironical manner so plateau i hope you know that is a, a largely leveled expanse of land at you know a high elevation comparatively high elevation from the ground right so like all that morning the whole family had walked about means the family had uh, taken their flight the family members had taken their flight to the high plateau to a high place that was midway down the opposite cliff it means as see it's shown in the picture also like they shifted to the opposite place and they begin taunting the seagull that is given in the title that seagull who was not able to take up the courage to fly high in the sky they begin to taunt him they begin to uh, use ironical statements against him that you would never be able to fly you are so coward uh, like you cannot to take up that courage right so he uh, this seagull he became uh, you know uh, mentally disturbed by these statements see what happens next the sun was now ascending the sky blazing on his ledge that faced the sound sun blazing on his ledge you know it uh, blazing on his ledge means sun was becoming tremendously hot sun was becoming extremely extremely hot right so uh, ascending the sky because it was rising in the sky uh, the afternoon was approaching so uh, a lot of heat was there right that faced the south he felt the heat because he had not eaten since the previous nightfall in fact you know a hungry person feels weakness obviously because uh, he has not consumed any food uh, from the previous nightfall he was not offered any food from his parents uh, side because his parents were unhappy with his uh, you know cowardice behavior so next paragraph he stepped slowly out to the brink of the ledge and standing on one leg with the other leg hidden under his wing he closed one eye then the other and pretended to be falling asleep so what he did he did a drama right so first uh, like he stepped uh, very slowly out of uh, out to the brink of that ledge right so started very slowly and uh, then afterwards he hid one of his leg and closed one eye and then a second eye right and he pretended pretended means to make a show off actually doing something else it means actually he was not sleeping but he made a show off to his parents and brothers and sisters that he is sleeping so still they took no notice of him it means none of his family members responded to his sleeping or his showing or his any of his actions next line 
ही सॉ हिज टू ब्रदर्स एंड हिज सिस्टर लाइंग ऑन द प्लेट्यू डोजिंग विद देर हैड्स संक इन टू देयर नेक्स dozing with their heads means light sleeping it means he notices that his siblings his brothers and sisters are sleeping right they are having rest during that day time so his father was pretending uh, sorry his father was uh, preening the feathers on his white back right preening you know make an effort to uh, maintain the feathers maintain the balance of the feathers so his father was doing that and only his mother was looking at him it means his siblings his brothers and sisters were taking rest his father was settling down his own feathers and only his mother was looking at him it means the mother must be taking some pity over that poor child who has not eaten anything uh, from the last uh, night right so next line she was standing on a high uh, little high hump on the plateau uh, her uh, her white breast thrust forward now and again she tore a piece of fish that lay at her feet and then scraped each side of her beak on the rock right the sight of the food maddened that seagull how he loved to tear food that way scraping his beak now and again to wet it right so uh, the words are like as uh, uh, it's given that high hump of the plateau it means with a high speed a high hump right curvature like a curvature on the back so scraping uh, scraping the beak you know uh, some of the birds scrap their beak scrap means they sharpen their beak as we sharp a pencil for fine handwriting so birds you know they rub their beak uh, they rub their beak towards a certain hard object uh, say a stone for example a stone right so they rub their beak towards uh, some hard object so that it can be sharpened right it can be made sharp so um, as it is uh, written here that uh, like her mother was uh, scraping means sharpening her beak right so another uh, phrase a difficult one here is wet it wet again means sharpen wet it scrap means sharpening means uh, rubbing against something why she was rubbing her beak so that she could make it sharp in order to tear a fish for the sake of eating food right so as soon as the seagull uh, you know saw that food he became mad why mad because he was uh, very hungry at that time he had not eaten anything from many hours so he became mad uh, at the sight of that food right so he he remembered that how he was offered that food by his mother every day and he loved to tear that fish from in between his scrap his beak now and uh, you know he wanted to again sharpen his beak and eat that fish quickly right so what has the mother done here children uh, try to understand the paragraph the mother had actually incited more of hunger in the uh, you know uh, in the mind of that seagull it means the mother really wanted to give a kind of you know attraction the mother really here uh, wanted that the young seagull should make an effort and how would he make an effort that uh, like a mother knows more than anyone else she already knew that that uh, it is uh, it is everybody's tendency that if they are shown something that is badly needed by them so they truly make an effort to achieve that so that's why uh, that mother seagull showed the piece of that fish and in she tore that piece of fish in front of that young seagull so that he should be more hungry and he should really make an effort to catch that right next is gaga he cried begging her to bring him some food it means uh, the young seagull was afraid of flying uh, still he was afraid of flying but he begged his mother for food uh, he tried 
to create uh, you know sympathy in the mind of his mother so that his mother should uh, offer him some food ga call she screamed back derisively you know derisively in such a kind when like somebody is showing that are you stupid like how can i offer you this food ho oh. but he kept calling plaintively plaintively means in a sorrowful mood in a sad way he kept calling his mother and uh, tried to get her sympathy right and after a minute and so he uttered a joyful scream joyful means a happy scream it means the young seagull uh, what he did at that time uttered means he produced a joyful it means he produced a happy sound right his mother had picked up a piece of the fish and was flying to him with it you know uh, so it is here that the this these are the two creatures we are talking about uh, the one on the left side is a young seagull who is afraid to uh, fly in the sky and the one offering food that something in uh, its beak is the seagull's mother who really wanted him to fly and that's why he uh, she brought that piece of fish near that seagull as i hope you can see that there is something caught in the beak of that uh, a mother seagull right who is uh, trying to attract the young seagull so that he can make an effort to fly right so his mother had i repeat the line his mother had picked up a piece of fish and was flying uh, across to him with it he leaned out eagerly tapping the rope with his feet trying to get nearer to her as she flew across it means you know that uh, that type of uh, doing uh, some kind of hilarious uh, situation when somebody offer something to you and when you make an effort to take that thing they take it back from you so in the same manner the mother seagull uh, got uh, the idea that she should attract the young seagull by offering a piece of fish so the young seagull would obviously make an effort to leave that surface and fly in the sky in order to get that piece of fish so what she did she went near to a young seagull and she came back right but when she was just opposite to him she halted halted means she stopped there her wings motionless the piece of fish in her beak almost within reach of his beak it means she totally went near to him he waited a moment in surprise wondering why she did not come nearer and then maddened by hunger he dived at the fish finally the line says that he took his first flight in the sky it means when he was attracted too much by that food and when he was uh, tormented by that extreme hunger he was extremely hungry and he thought at that time or he must have thought at that time that either he should grab that piece of fish or else he would die of hunger so that's why he plunged at that piece of fish and took his first flight into the sky right so next line is with a loud scream he fell outwards and downwards into space then a monstrous terror seized him and his heart stood still means obviously because it was his first time he couldn't hear he sorry he could hear nothing it means a loud scream was there a loud shout was there when he fell outwards and you know downwards into the space into the open sky and a very fearful terror very fearful feeling caught him right his heart uh, just you know imagine his heart became still at that time he felt that his heart has stopped beating for a moment right so next was that uh, the next moment he felt his wings spread outwards he as soon as he made an effort he felt that his wings had spread outwards his wings were accompanying him his wings were supporting him in fact in the beginning he was uh, uh, he was afraid due to no reason at all he was thinking that his wings would not support him right so the next line the wind rushed against his breast 
feathers then under the stomach and against his wings he could feel the tips of the wings cutting through the air he was not falling headlong now it means he was uh, of the view that he would fell headlong but he was not falling right so he was soaring gradually downwards uh, and outwards right soaring means act of mounting act of going high in the sky right so he was not falling headlong means he was not falling in haste he was uh, he was not in a hurry right so he was diving he was getting high he was uh, you know soaring in the sky soaring s o a r soar means to fly high in the sky right so see what happens next uh, he was no longer afraid the line is very much simple he was not afraid now he just felt a bit dizzy uh, dizzy i hope you know uh, that uncomfortable situation when somebody feels that they are losing the balance uh, often human beings feel dizzy when they when they have some kind of weakness or when they have just recovered from some illness right dizzying uh, uh, the state when we feel a uh, loss of balance right so he felt a little bit dizzy right then he flapped his wings once and he soared upwards means once again he took up the courage flapped his wings and he flew high in the sky he is saying ga ga right so his mother swooped past him his mother swooped past means to plunge to fly downward suddenly his mother uh, flew downwards him suddenly right so her wings making a loud noise because she was too happy at his first flight he answered with her another scream it means birds uh, both of them a seagull and his mother exchanged their thoughts by screaming by shouting then his father flew over him screaming it means his father wished him uh, you know felicitations congratulations that finally he has taken his first flight he saw his brothers and sister flying around him uh, curvetting and banking and soaring and diving right so he saw his entire family curvetting you know uh, when somebody leaps high or leaping like a horse right and again that is banking uh, flying with one wing when one wing flies higher as compared to the other wing right so they begin to fly like that soaring again means flying and diving in the water so uh, the entire family enjoyed and celebrated his first flight next paragraph then he completely forgot that he had not always been able to fly it means within a minute he forgot that he was so afraid of flying and commended himself it means to praise oneself right commended himself to dive and soar and curve shrieking shrilly right shrieking shrilly means producing sharp and loud cries right so next he says he was near the sea now flying straight over it facing straight out over the ocean he saw a vast green sea beneath him of obviously the sea was there as shown in the picture itself right he dropped his legs he wanted to stand on that sea his legs sank into it it means the, it was cover his legs was cover covered with water right he screamed with fright he shouted with fear and attempted to rise again flapping his wings it means he was afraid of you know he was afraid of losing himself in the water now but he took up the same kind of courage and uh, begin to rise high again by flapping his wings right but he was tired and weak with hunger and couldn't rise exhausted exhausted means when somebody is too much tired exhausted by the strange exercise and his feet sank into the green sea and then his belly touched it right so and he sank no further no further means he couldn't uh, sink any further right so like the little ridges uh, that back of that seagull uh, he was able to adjust himself but he was not able to uh, fly anymore because he was very much tired he has not eaten anything right in fact he had made his first effort in life uh, in order to survive on this earth so 
that's why uh, because he was hungry he couldn't fly any more he couldn't enjoy himself any more uh, he wanted to be on rest mode or to eat something right so he was floating on it and around him his family was screaming praising him screaming is a way to express their happiness right praising him and their beaks were offering him scraps of dogfish it's also a kind he had made his first flight it means the family which was refusing him uh, any kind of food they all were offering him parts of scraps of means parts of the dogfish that is often found in the sea right they were offering him uh, that parts of dogfish so that he can satisfy his hunger and become happy so uh, this was all about uh, the story first flight right so i hope you have understood it and uh, along with that i would like to uh, tell you that uh, you know uh, which i just mentioned in the beginning of the story uh, children uh, the first flight story or the first effort of the seagull the first effort of flying of seagull can be Uh, you know easily compared to the act of learning how to handle a bicycle you know uh, the thought came to my mind when we learn how to handle a bicycle how to uh, go by a bicycle uh, what human beings are afraid of uh, first uh, like we are supported by somebody then uh, like we are given half support where uh, first of all like somebody uh, helps us how to maintain the balance how to uh, maintain the paddles how to uh, move the paddles right and uh, then you know how we are uh, very much afraid that if the companion who is teaching us cycling uh, if the companion leaves us at any point of time we may fall right so the same happens with the birds as well so the seagull was very much afraid because he was being encouraged by of course he was encouraged by his family but even then his mind was full of fear right so he couldn't uh, resist that feeling of flying any more when he was offered a fish you know when a reward is offered to somebody they surely make more of the effort uh, to attain that reward so in same manner when we often uh, when we are able to see that if we learn cycling we would be able to enjoy ourselves independently we would be able to go uh, using this means we would be able to go anywhere using this means right so at that time we learn it gradually of course uh, we fall many times we uh, get injured many times some do it easily some do it uh, with a lot of uh, with a lot of effort right so that's different from one person to the other so same as the uh, condition of seagull that some of the birds uh, learn flying very easily while others do take time the only thing that is needed as motivation above that self motivation works you know motivation encouragement that is offered to us from the outside world that also works but what works more in fact the our self motivation like if we are self motivated we would easily be able to achieve our goals in life right so i hope the story is clear try to do the back exercise questions and uh, i would forward a pdf containing the answers i hope you have understood the lesson and if you have any queries any questions you may leave that in the comment section or we would discuss the same in our live session in the upcoming days right have a nice day thank you